Are you interested in property investment? If so, you probably want to make sure your portfolio is successful and it's going to grow in value. But with so many pieces to the property research puzzle, how do you make the right decisions to ensure positive outcomes? Well, I believe demographics is going to hold the key to our future property markets. That means how many of us there are going to be, how we want to live, where we want to live, is going to be more important in shaping the future of our property markets and the short-term ups and downs of supply and demand, consumer sentiment or interest rates. This means understanding Australia's lifestyle and demographic trends is going to provide you the type of insight you need to constructing a successful property investment portfolio. So let's have a quick look at some interesting Australian demographic trends and their implications. First of all, our population is ageing. Our baby boomers are becoming empty nesters and as a result their lifestyles are changing. Many are getting ready to retire from work, downsize their family home and travel more. Most won't be looking for sea change or tree change. However, apartment living which boasts security and requires much less maintenance will be attractive to many of them. Our population is also changing. The average number of people living in each household is decreasing as, a as the proportion of lone people households, couples only, single parents plus dependent children households are on the increase. This means there's going to be less demand for those sprawling properties with four bedrooms and more demand for smaller medium density properties. Also, our population is growing. It's currently about 24 million people, and even though the population growth is slowing, it's estimated that our population will be about 28 million people in about 10 years' time. Close to four out of five of this increase, 3.2 million people are expected to be housed in our capital cities, mostly in Melbourne and Sydney, and then to a lesser extent in Perth and Brisbane. This means we're going to need to build some 1.7 million new dwellings in the next 10 years, of which 75%, about 1.3 million, are going to be in our capital cities and higher density dwellings. In fact, building approvals for high density housing is quickly catching up to detached, you know, separate houses in Melbourne and Sydney already. At the same time, our first home buyers are struggling. The property market is becoming less accessible for them. Housing affordability, particularly in our capital cities, is amongst the most expensive in the world. What's happened is many first time home buyers are willing to compromise their housing preferences just to get into the market, and many start off buying an apartment rather than a house. Others are becoming renting investors. They're renting where they want to live, but can't afford to buy, and buying an apartment as an investor. Another trend is our preferences are changing. Gen Ys have different preferences to the generations before them. There's an increase in the number of people wanting to live in the city or close to the CBD, so they're closer to their work, their social life attractions, and apartments make a more convenient lifestyle for them. These demographic trends have some, have some important implications. Apartment living is on its way to becoming more popular than ever, and it's certainly su superseding those big quarter acre blocks, that old and great Australian dream. These changes in Australia's lifestyle preferences are indeed having a ripple effect on the economy, and they also mean significant and lasting changes to our real estate market. So now that you're up to speed on why the apartment living, you need to start thinking about how to intelligently invest in this type of property. With all this evidence, the debate about whether houses or apartments make better investments just got a lot more interesting. You really can't just stay locked into that camp that believes that you should invest where there's land under a house. At the very least, it's worth considering how to diversify your portfolio to include an inner suburban, not inner city, but an inner suburban one or two bedroom apartment. But be very careful. Investing in apartments requires the same comprehensive level of scrutiny and due diligence as freestanding houses because there are some winners and some bad eggs in the apartment market too. For example, there's a looming oversupply of the inner city in CBD apartments in Melbourne and Brisbane in particular and Perth and to a lesser extent Sydney. Some of those big monoliths coming out of the ground are destined to become the slums of the future. Plus, with recent changes to investor lending, local investors are going to have difficulty settling on the purchases, and many foreign investors will have no chance of settling because most of the banks have pulled the rugs out from under them. They're no longer lending to foreign investors. There's a tsunami of failed settlements heading to our shores, and many of the off-the-plan investors, and some developers, are going to get burned. 
and it won't be rosy for those that can settle. You see, what's going to happen is they're going to find themselves in a heaps of trouble as they're likely to get stuck with negative equity because a glut of properties is likely to hit the market as some investors scramble to sell their properties. At the same time, some developers are going to try and resell their stock that didn't settle. This, of course, is likely to make the value of similar properties plummet and drag down the value for those investors that actually did have the financial discipline to settle. So my recommendation is steer clear of those off the plan and new apartments and look for properties with an element of scarcity. I'd be looking for one of the, an established apartment in a sought after inner or middle ring suburb in a building that's got a level of character to it with a good proportion of owner occupiers. And with capital growth likely to be lower in the coming years, I'd also look for properties to which you can add some value through renovations rather than wait for the market to do the heavy lifting. Apartment living looks like the way of the future and strategic investors need to work out how and when they're going to respond to this growing trend. If you need some help, if you'd like somebody on your side to assist you, why not have a chat with the team at Metropole? The award-winning team have no properties for sale but access to every property on the market and we'd love to help you if you're a beginner get going in the property investment world. If you're an established investor, we'd be more than happy to sit down and do a strategic portfolio review. So contact us at metropole.com.au. We look forward to being part of your wealth creation journey.